Hello, good people. This is your guy, your educator, your communicator, your free thinker. Back at it once again, coming at you from the Lone Star State with another edition of the Media Mike Speaks. All right, I've decided to do something a little different. So, at the request of one of my subscribers, um, so I decided to do certain editions on the police. So, a world I am all too familiar with. So, as in, you know, my background. So, this is the first episode of Law and No Order. Because over the past years, we've had a lot of brash, uh, I would say, police shootings of unarmed African American men, and I would say women also. So, I decided to start a segment addressing that you know those things so this is the story of carrier horn now i don't know if you are familiar with her i didn't find out who she was until about i think last year or year before and and it's a very interesting story a former buffalo police officer carrier horn and she was fired for protecting a black suspect being choked by a white officer one of her fellow officers uh, as a matter of fact so and this happened back in 2006 and she actually lost her pension so here let's talk about this so former police officer Buffalo police officer Carrier Horn stopped a white Buffalo police officer from choking a black suspect. Then that same officer, the one who was choking out the African American suspect, attacked her, turned around, got up, turned around, and punched her in the jaw. She was later fired for, I guess, interference. And she was denied her pension after 19 years on the job. Wow. Now, at that time, Mayor Brown, the mayor of Buffalo, uh, New York, I lived it in New York. That, that's upstate, as a matter of fact. I lived in Utica, so right down from Syracuse. I worked in Syracuse and Utica. So uh, from 1993 to 1995, so for two years I was up there, worked up there. So I'm all too familiar with New York State, especially upstate New York. So at the time, the mayor did say, Officer Horn, Carrier Horn, did not have to be terminated. This is from the mayor. Officer Horn made a conscious decision to go before an arbitrator. Now he's saying after that was done, I don't know if they're, un well, New York is a union state. So I don't know in this case what happened, but I think what he's saying is she made a conscious decision to go before an arbitrator in an open public process, as opposed to taking the judgment of the first african-american police commissioner he says so i guess the commissioner at the time i guess told her to get a union rep i'm not sure here the arbitrator recommended she be fired a judge upheld the decision and horn was denied her pension so interesting wow so i guess what they were saying was she should not have gone before the arbitrator she should have gone before her union rep I would say I guess I'm not sure or listen to the African American police commissioner but I'm pretty sure there's more to the story than this but I guess what, what got me is that she defended this individual because I'm pretty sure he would have died according to the story he was getting choked out so anyway let's read on the Common Council has now introduced a resolution asking the current Attorney General for another review of Horn's case. In the meantime, the mayor said he was offered the mayor says he has offered her a full time job with benefits, an opportunity she turned down. Now I don't know why, but I'm pretty sure she has a reason. Because look, I would want my pension. I don't need to go back to work for benefits I've already earned. You see. And that's probably why she turned it down. What am I going back to work for? If I done put in 19 years on the job, 
you give me my pension and let me go on about my merry way. And I would decide what to do with the rest of my life at that point. So, but since then, since then, she has proposed to carry a horn act. Now, this is an act. She's trying to get it. Uh, I don't know if it's a bill. It may be a bill passed into law. She, she's working on that. And what it is is that it is a duty to intervene policy, which calls for officers to protect citizens from unnecessary or excessive use of force. This is the resolution. And I do support her. I must say, I support her and the act she's proposing brave officer you see good people the world of law enforcement is male dominated well it's about 90 percent caucasian males so if you're going into this profession which i have been in you most likely will probably face some form of discrimination racism and certain biasness so you have to know what you're getting into when pursuing this type of profession however this former officer needs to be commended for her act of bravery of preventing a fellow officer from potentially killing a suspect. You see, I don't totally agree with the defunding of the police, but I truly understand because it's bad officers and corrupt leadership who make it hard for the officers who try to do their job, a target in the community. And as long as this is allowed to go on, we will continue to have these type of problems. The culture of law enforcement must change. Otherwise, we will continue to have more of the same. So if you want to reward the good cops, well, that all starts from the top. All right, good people. Sad to say, but that's it for today. And remember, if you have or had a bad day, let's all stand alongside former officer Carrier and support Carrier's bill so that it can become law so that citizens can be okay. This is your educator, your communicator, your free thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night.